the company of Curlews. Chapter 11 The Last Run Oh, I coughed. My throat so dry. It didn't stop me driving on to catch that one last fish. We drift down river. The first run ends catchless. We're under the bridge, close to the rotten wooden ship buffers. I put my hand into the water to quench my thirst. The water is saliva thick. It has an earthy, vile stench about it of a decomposing body. Six hundred yards down river we've glided, not far past the white bascule bridge. We climb hastily from the waterway, exiting up a ladder tied to a scaffolding pole. The ladder is easily pulled down onto the mud. Step by step we help each other up to the towpath. The night was taking its toll. The coracle was heavy on my back. It weighed me down each step I took, even though I had no fish. As we walk back towards town, the sinister shadows of the dramatic bridge cast monstrous cage-like lines into a simmering, slowly moving river. And the luminous shadows once again unnerved me, just like in my childhood. The moonlight gloominess sets my teeth onto the edge of a dank nether world, an underworld where black horses would drag you down to the depths and to your death. I searched my pockets for the white hawthorn. I felt encased in a womb, fighting for air. It was not warm, definitely not safe. I was sinking. I was drowning. Let's get away from you, I said. I needed to break out of the constricting bubble I found myself in. The kissing gates clinked as we rushed through them. The metal bridge that usurped Brunel's wooden construction scared me. The decaying wooden buffers around the base were taking on gruesome shapes. It was time to move on. I breathed in the fresh air and sighed relief, refocusing on my task. A hand came out of the darkness, made me jump, offering me a bottle of water it was. Ta, I said, and drank. I drank like a dog in a puddle, water dribbled over down my chops, satisfying my thirst. It filled every crevice in my body, revitalising me. I was finding strength, in my quest for the catch. My head, full of the fish that had got away from me so many times, that had laughed at me at my bungling attempts to net him. As we walked back along the towpath, something moved in the undergrowth and flew off. In all my years I've never seen a live cormorant that close. The only ones I saw that close were dead ones that I'd shot. It definitely spooked me. Come on, I said. A lonely seagull squawked, floating mid-river. In the distance I heard the curlew cry. At the base of an oak tree I passed a holly bush full of red berries. A robin sat silhouetted on the bush in a full beam of the moon, waiting watching our every move. I need a minute, I said. I was light-headed with tiredness all of a sudden, low blood sugar. I had to lie down. 
Let me sit the while, I asked. Give me five minutes, won't you? I took my coracle off my back and laid the oar by its side. My body ached from the effort. I closed my eyes and breathed long breaths. A drugged sleep took me. My mind ghost-like slipped into the never-never snooze land of tiredness. My last thoughts were of my wife, Branwen. I murmured in my muffled sleep, Don't go. Her scent lit up my head with warmth and tenderness, and in my inner mind I noticed small things. Her hair didn't shine with a vigour, I remembered. Her gait was not quite as sprightly as when we had fallen in love. There was silence. Could you? The cry of an owl woke me. I stirred. One more run, my partner said to me. Aye, one more. The curlew called, urging us on. Aye, aye, last one, I said. I was revived. Half past three in the morning, the full moon, no stars in a mackerel sky. We drift down river once again, floating over the shadows on the rippling water, and this time with no doubt that this would be the last run.